Hello, my name is Magnus Soraka. I'd like to say something that is of utmost importance to all of us in Nigeria. The videos that came in from different angles yesterday to my channel were not pleasing at all, particularly the videos that came in from Lagos. I did not, in fact, like the, the sheer blatant display of hatred to the Igbo people. I know there had been no love lost between the Igbos and the Yorubas, but I never knew to the extent to which this hatred will be, take, will be taken. To the fact that somebody's arm was amputated because she was perceived to go to be voting for a particular party was the extreme to which any meaningful Nigeria or any sane individual can behold in his very eyes. To the fact that somebody can say that he dares any Igbos to come and vote in that polling unit. It's a clear, blatant invitation for anarchy. Yes, as a person, I am an Urobo man, proudly Urobo man. I love being an Urobo man. I would love to be an Urobo man in another life. I have had my personal grounds with an Igbo man, with John man, with Biron man. With... But it's not enough to take my personal grief or personal biases with the people I've related to to stereotype a whole people or to make it as a conclusion that a certain ethnicity owes that bias that I have for them. That's terrible. That's really, really terrible. The Igbos are a wonderful people. As far as I'm concerned, they are the most cosmopolitan people that have strengthened Nigeria. Yes, they may have their lapses, just as every other tribe also have their lapses. But they've tried as much as possible to be the true Nigerians that we really desire. Somebody once told me and said, go out there. This is Plateau. This is Birom land. Go out there. Before you see one Birom man, you will see an Igbo man. It is in this same country we said that anywhere you go to and you don't see an Igbo man, Please leave that place. It means that place is terrible. So it means the Igbos have become a yardstick to measure the hospitality, the goodness of areas. Why then the hatred? Why then this deep-rooted, deep-seated hatred for the people? What exactly have they done? Let me also tell Nigerians, I am not an Igbo man. And I don't know if I'm speaking the minds of Igbos. You said Igbos don't come out to vote. But this time around, they've proven to you that they have the capacity to come out and vote. It's just that in previous time, they've been not they, they've not been considered in the political affairs of this country. And now they want to prove the country wrong. I was in Apata yesterday, I was in many places. I met a young man who said he traveled all the way from Portacourt to cast this is one vote in his polling unit here in Jos. And I was touched. Yesterday, I met an old woman, an Igbo woman. She was walking and looking for a polling unit. She must have trekked a good three or four kilometers. This is a woman in her 60s, approaching 70s. And I asked her, where is your polling unit? And the place she's going to vote, it requires another five kilometers to go in a situation where there are no cars. I had to offer her, say, because of this one vote, I will drive you to your place of a polling unit, wait for you to vote, and I drive you back. I drove her to her house. She went there, they started counting. I said, okay, you have not uploaded. We waited until they finished counting, and they gave her opportunity to vote. I ensured she voted. These are the things I did. And that showed that I didn't see whether she was Igbo, whether she was any other ethnicity. All I saw was an elderly woman who needed help, and I gave her the help. So why this hatred? I had spent my entire life believing that the Fulanese are the problem of this country. But with recent events emanating from the Southwest, I beg to differ this time. You cannot hold that deep-seated hatred for a people who just come to your place only to act a living. If you are so pained that you have so many Igbos in your area, please flood your people to their place. After all, there's no law that says people cannot migrate. Go there, 
and face the challenges of being there and also a living for yourselves. It is sheer extreme to amputate a woman's hand because she wants to vote for... We have not got... This is not Rwanda. This is not Sudan. This is Nigeria. I grew up believing that Nigeria has a highest form of civility above other countries in Nigeria. But what I've seen yesterday, we are way far from civility. We are the most cruel, most barbaric set of human beings that have displayed themselves in recent time, and particularly in Lagos. Jagaban, you said you own Lagos. You said Lagos is yours. You are popular in Lagos. You are the city boy. If indeed you are the city boy, why use thugs to shape your status as the city boy in Lagos? Why not put your popularity to test in a free and fair exercise and see if your days of city boys still holds ground or a new city boy is in town and that's Peter Obi. I do not like the treatment being meted on the Igbos in Lagos. Never and I totally condemn it. If this country must remain one, we must tolerate every other people that comes to stay on our, in our places. That is why we are called One Nigeria. To conclude this video, however, I must say this. That this 2023 election is perhaps the last string of faith that the Igbos will have in this country. The, this 2023 election is the last string of faith or hope or confidence the Igbos will have in this country. If after this, the whole of Nigeria still shows that Igbos, we hate you. Please do not complain further. If they start saying Nigeria is a zoo, we want Biafra, we are not part of this country. Because then every agitation they will bring after now will be justified. After all I have seen. And I also want to speak to Igbos, so please exercise patience. I'd like to thank every Igbo man that came out yesterday to vote. In fact, for the first time, you proved everybody wrong to say that Igbos know they come vote. Well, you proved that if the atmosphere was right, if the purpose was right, if the objective was right, Igbos are also Nigerians and they do want to participate in the political exercise of this country. So I say, exercise patience. Allow those who have seen the truth take your fight for you. I will not be here and see injustice being meted on the people because of the tribe and tongue they speak. Our former, our former national anthem said, though tribe and tongue may differ, in brotherhood we stand. Does that still hold ground anywhere in Nigeria? I'd like to tell the good people of Yoruba people, please, this is a country that we all decided to be part of. This is a country that is governed by a constitution that says, we the people of Nigeria. To begin to exercise this deep-rooted hatred on the people because of where they come from and the tribe they speak, shows how backward and how deep we are still living in the dark ages of barbarism. That is very, very bad. My name still remains Magnus Oraka, and I'm begging us to please, let's live as one Nigeria. If you feel there are too many Igbos in Yoruba land, please send your children to Igbo land and stay. I don't think they will drive them. This is not good. This is not good. I'd like to say thank you. I can say this much.